Carol here and a warm welcome to my craft room while well, I'm back with the box that goes with this wedding card that I just created thank you everybody for your kind comments your encouragement and inspiring me as I continue to create cards and art projects I do appreciate it so instead of an envelope like this <laughs> I decided to go with a box now I'm going to explain it here as my friend Tina helped me out. I make I have a seven by eight card. So you add three inches to the base, which when we do that would be seven inches would be 10 and eight inches would be 11. So your base would be 10 by 11. You're going to score it in on all edges. Well, there's four of them, right? <laughs> four corners. <laughs> It's early, uh, an inch. You're gonna come in an inch because my card is an inch. Now, this is if you don't wanna add tissue paper, if you want it to just lay flat. If I had to do this over again, I would have made it an inch and a half, which means I would have added another inch to going around the edges when I cut out the entire uh, box, right? before I started to score or cut. Woo, yes. But I didn't do that, but it did fit and it was, you know, it was fine. So here we go. I'm scoring around at the top and the bottom. Now, you know that you're going to make the bottom, it's going to be 10 by 11, scored around at one inch, and then the top portion going over top of your card, you're going to add another quarter, or I'm sorry, eighth of an inch, right? because it has to go over the box. Hello. <laughs> he just wanders around my craft room. Don't mind him. He does it every time I create a tutorial. So here we go. So you want an extra eighth of an inch. That's all you need, just so it's not too tight going down on the bottom portion of your card. It makes sense, right? So here we go. I'll put it up on the screen just so you have something. So my seven by eight inch card is going to need a base of 10 and by 11 inches and there it is this is the bottom of a 12 by 12 pack of paper you know you get that hard cardboard on the bottom which is wonderful because it looks like a cardboard box it's identical I just tore it off one of my 12 by 12 packs easy peasy then we're going to cut around it now the reason why I'm staring at it here you want to make sure you set it in front of you and you're going to cut in moving inwards here so the bottom you'll cut a line going right up to the crease cut it turn it around then come in yeah go to the bottom part cut in cut in now once you've done this it'll make it easy for the other two sides to cut so just face it out and you're going to see where you're going to need to cut which is obviously on the inside now i am going to do a miter just miter it off on each angle. And I do this by folding up that one section so I don't mess up when I'm mitering off the edges. This is so it doesn't stick up when you do the fold. So here we go, yep, fold it up. This is the easiest way. And you kind of have a little ledge there to go by. And then miter whatever you think should be the portion. You don't need too much. It's nice and easy, yep, there we go. I guess I didn't on that one. I got confident. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> do as I say, not what I do, right? <laughs> Woohoo, okay. Must be in a ooh -hoo mood today. Um, yeah, so here we go. I'm going to miter it. Sometimes when you see if you fold it like that and you see that it's sticking up just a tad, take it down and miter it again. Yeah, and I tell you what, I was so thrilled that my card you know got such nice reviews by my subscribing friends thank you very much 
I tell you what, I was thrilled, thrilled. You know I am. I really do enjoy what I do. So here you go. First thing you want to do is turn it over because this is what's going to be on the inside. I take my ATG or you can use double-sided tape, but I also go over the top with liquid white glue. The reason for that is I can maneuver it because it has that movability with the liquid, right? This, I don't feel confident that that's going to stay all by itself. So I do use a good glue. Oh yeah, we're raining hearts here. I was so happy. I still am happy because I get to show you the box I created. I took out some of these uh, thingy dingies at the top there. Be paper clips, Carol. Yeah, I even color coded them. Four pink and four green. Paper clips are easy peasy. You could use, you know, clothes pegs. Paper clips is clean as you're going up. So that's what I did to hold it. It dries in seconds. It uh, doesn't take long at all because, you know, you don't want to pour that liquid glue on. You just want a small portion all the way around uh, the edges and then it'll ooze in. It'll do the oozing thing. Yeah. Come on, Carol. You just put it on there. I must have been tired by this time. I'm, I'm having to like I always take my time. I should say that I do take my time on stuff like that because you don't want to make any mistakes and have to start over. Not me. But, like I said, if I had to do it again, I would have made the lip on this a little longer so it wouldn't have been so exact when I put the lid on. And if you want to put tissue paper, obviously you're going to have to add some more inches to the cutout. There you go. It is so easy, really. If you, and you know what's really nice too, if you put a die cut and die cut the top portion of the box so that when you're looking down on it, you put acetate on the inside and then you look down upon the project that you made, obviously it would be the card, right? So there's all kinds of possibilities. I went with not doing that. So here we go. I added a quarter inch, 10 by a quarter by 11 by a quarter is the top cover. That's all you need is that quarter inch. Score it in that, that, I'm sorry, I say a quarter, I'm so used to a quarter, eighth of an inch. Now to get, I like to clip off a little oval on the box so it looks a little bit more professional. What better way to get the center point is with the Tim Holtz centering ruler. And, or you could measure it and then find the center and make a tick mark and then you know, I use the one inch, I've had this uh, I think it's a Fiskars. I, I'm not sure. Uh, one inch punch. You can see one of the handles that broke off. Oh yeah. I must have been really tense one time. I, <laughs> I was probably trying to cut something that was too thick and then I broke the handle off. Who knows, you know. Um, I have to watch my muscles. I mean, I do ride an awfully big Harley and, you know, these arm muscles sometimes just get out of control. <laughs> Oh yeah, sure, Carol. <laughs> Let's go with that, right? Okay, this is so exciting because it's only a 33-minute tutorial. I mean, after a two-and-a-half-hour tutorial, I feel like I, uh, what am I going to do? It's only 33 minutes long. So once we get that done, you know, by the time you have the top cover completed, the bottom's already dry, and then you can move on to your uh, design. Now, I wanted to keep it easy peasy elegant on the top. I didn't want to go wild. I didn't want to put flowers because it's going to uh, be presented to the bride and groom. And so it's probably going into a box or, you know, the bridal container where envelopes are going to be going in at the same time. So you don't want to have anything too intense on it that would break off or get squished. So I went with the easy peasy. So I'm going over the same method. I mitered the edges. You can see how much of a miter I took off of uh, each corner. And then I chomped out that half moon on either side. I always go with the long side rather than the short. It, it looks more professional that way. And um, you don't have to do it, you know, but it does look nice, doesn't it? You generally see box covers with that little groove out of it so that you could put your nail in there and flick it up. And here I just pour some in the center and 
put it together and now my lid's going to have green clicks. Yes, color coded. And yeah, my iPad, as you can see, is slowly falling down there on the glass mat. Yes. <laughs> it's mesmerizing to watch it. Is it going to totally fall down while you're watching my tutorial? I hope not. There's nothing on it. I just set it there. Sometimes I uh, FaceTime somebody and I'm talking, yucking at a friend, or sometimes I'm listening to some wonderful music. So you never know. But I can see it slide. We're already at the mark there. Look at that. The box cover is complete. And then I'll move on and get my wonderful pink ribbon. I matched the pink ribbon with the card pink. And that was the pink oxide ink. It, oh, beautiful. So I have to, Carol, just to quit going back to the card. You always want to go back to the card. No, you don't. You're creating the box. So on the lid, no, this is going on the bottom. Okay, so it's not the lid portion. I'm pretty sure it's onto the bottom where my card's going to go. And in this, I think it's We Are Member Keepers pack that I showed you, 12 by 12, I got it at Michael's long time ago. I don't even know if I could find this, but I'll try to find it for you. And it had little gold hearts. Everything just went together, you know. It, I was really pleased at the end result, yes. And just like I said, don't put any glue. Now, while you're waiting for stuff to dry, you can grow a flower right there in your craft room. I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities, right? But I don't glue it thinking that just because I measured the outside, it's going to fit on the inside. It doesn't work that way. Keep putting it in because when you fold things up, it's not always precise. So, um, yeah, as I clean that out, I'll get it as close to it. I don't want any edges folding up because I'm going to do all the one inch edging on the inside of the box and I do want it to be as precise as I can get it. So here we go. I know I'm going to take my ATG and I'm going to put it down and then, you know, make up your mind like this is the bottom, but I am going to have a congratulations tag on the inside. So I want to make sure the hearts are falling down the right way. When you take the card out, I don't want my hearts upside down. When I put that uh, tag in there with congratulations, I want everything going in the same direction, of course. So um, just get that old ATG going or double-sided tape, liquid if you like it. I don't like liquid doing this because you risk it oozing out. I don't like oozing. I don't even like the word oozing. <laughs> Do you? I don't like it. I'm going to proceed to make the one inch. Now, it's not going to be one inch by the 11 inches across or the 10 inches across. You're going to fold it. So you're going to make it another inch longer. So it'll be one inch by, you know, if it's the 10 inch side, you're going to make it 11 inches, one by 11. Squeeze it in there. Take your pencil. Make a pencil mark so you have a guideline and then cut it off because like I say, nothing is exact when you're putting a box together. Then see that fold? I make sure I have that little half inch. Just a half inch would be nice. Um, quarter inch if you want to extend it on the fold so all the corners uh, don't you know, you if you make it flush, you do risk it not being right on. But if you curve that edge, you know, the corner piece, it's going to look beauteous. Trust me on that. I've made enough boxes that I uh, haven't mastered it, but I can tell you I'm more comfortable if I make it a little bit longer. Yes, it's falling hearts. I'm really comfortable with this. So here we go, ATG, put it inside. And then you, you want to make sure this measures right. Now, if it doesn't, what am I doing on my, on my uh, mouse there? Stop it, Carol. You're always looking at comments. I have my big screen up, the one that I'm looking at here. And anyway, I just take my bone folder and I slide it across to make everything nice and secure. And then if you don't have it, put it down on your cutting mat or with your scissors and use your knife. I'll show you that later how that how I did that. 
um, on the bottom portion. And look at that. Woohoo! It's beauteous. I love it. That one eighth of an inch makes the difference on the lid. Now my Spellbinder die that I had already cut because I put all my pieces parts away in plastic bags. So I knew I would use it again. So I put it down the center. So when that card comes up, you have a pleasant surprise that says congratulations and you get to use your stash. I use the Mama Elephant uh, Blessings stamp set. So it had a congratulations in there. I used my powder. Don't forget to put that powder down. Oh yeah, I did this time. Generally I forget. There it comes the powder and then the verse mark and then stamp her down. Congratulations. I love this Fiskar. If you don't have uh, what do you call those things? Like a Tim Holtz stamp positioner, Carol. It's a stamp positioner. If you don't have one, the less expensive route to go is this Fiskar press because it does have all the little measurements and you just press down. It's wonderful. I make sure I even have a spare one of these. I don't want to lose it because I use it off. And look at me. Yeah, this is the gold and the pink I had left over from the wedding card itself. Remember that? And then with uh, what I couldn't get up there with my fingers, I just added some more gold. Then I'll brush off all the little pieces parts. I'll take my pointy tool there to make sure all of it is precise. And then I'll heat set it and that's going to go down. Don't put that back here. Yeah. Whew. Yes. Sometimes you get so busy, you, you just put it back in the gold. Why do I have that open there? You know how I, yeah, I even stopped, like, put it away, Carol. You've spilled enough in your day. Just put it away. And there you have it. I love the little filigree. It's almost like brush lettering, you know, and uh, it's really pretty. And then I heat set this, and it's going to go down the box. See how easy peasy it is, my friends? There it is. We are memory keepers. <laughs> Trust me, that's, that's what it was. Oh, and it was only, what was it, $6.99 for that. Wow. That whole beautiful, oh, I should have got two. Anywho, yes, that was a pleasant surprise, $6.99. Hmm, that's a good deal on 12 by 12 paper. So here we go. I am, I don't know what I'm doing there, but I put it in. Oh, I'm measuring around for the bottom portion. This is the bottom of the card. That's even nice, right, with the filigree marks all over the place. That's pretty too, but I chose to do the so, the more solid color that's on the back side of this card base. So I will grab, yeah, right there. I chose that one because it had like crowns. I don't know. There was something, uh, some type of like uh, romantic Regency feel to it. Yeah, look at that. I just loved it. So uh, just put the ATG uh, on the back. Then we're going to set it down. Now, if this doesn't measure precise when you put it down, which generally it doesn't, there's always that little bit. When you set it down, use your knife to cut it because you can get that blade right in on the crease and make a beautiful cut. Yeah, come on, Carol. There we go. I'm probably just waiting for it to dry or I don't know what I was doing there, but slowly we will get back to it. I know I have to cut this off. I can see it right there. Just a little wee bit was sticking out. So I cut it off. I just rolled back that piece of um, whatever it is, that white, pla uh, it's not plastic. It's my protective mat. Let's call it that, my protective mat. I roll it back and then I cut it. So nice. I'll do it eventually. It's there we go. Yeah. <laughs> wise choice, right? Rise, wise choice. Push that back. Push that back too. And here we go. Just cut her off there. You know, when I was making the card, I wanted to mention this. You can add Tyvek to your corners. When I made the card, I had a friend. She goes by Dottalina. I call her Dot. She mentioned that to me. If it's going to be open, like when I used to make albums, I would use Tyvek on all of the pages because it would be, you know, you can't rip Tyvek and you can get it at your stationery store. So that was a really good idea. I didn't do it. I doubled up with the 110 pound card stock on the corners, but you can use that. I just wanted to mention that 
if you're watching uh, the wedding card, and I will put that tutorial up at the end of here, you can do the folds and put Tyvek down. Okay, so that was a great idea, Dot. Thank you very much for mentioning that in the comments. I appreciate it. So here we go. These are the little 2 by 3 envelopes. I put a little piece of 2 by 3 not quite 2 by 3 on the inside so they could... There's 10 people that went in on this card. So they're going to put their, their gift, their money gift inside this envelope. They're going to put their name on the outside and then they're going to write their note. And there it is, pink and cream. I did. And now I just set that aside because I, this Victorian LDRS Creative Die, I've used it in so many tutorials. This is one I couldn't be without in my stash, especially for Victor Victorian style anything that you're doing. Beautiful. Just a beautiful die. And what I love about LDRS Creative dies, they're Teflon coated, so really easy to get out of the die. And they're color coded, so you can use, you know, one will go with another set. They all intermingle with one another. They're all friends with one another. That's what I'm trying to say. I had uh, quite a few ideas running through my head for the top of this box. But I thought when I went to my ribbon stash, I had the matching pink ribbon in the satin. And uh, nothing is more romantic than using satin on any project, especially a wedding card and the box that goes with it. So here I am using that, um, I showed you the spongy mat. This takes out all the gut pieces, lays it on this mat nicely. It's kind of magnetized. Then when you put it over your garbage, it falls off. It doesn't fall off until you put it on an ankle. I love that thing. I have two of them. And I will show you, if you watched my wedding card tutorial, I put all the names on there and it's over on my blog. So here are, see how I'm cutting off a little piece off of each of those cards so it fits nicely into the envelope. Martha Stewart. I love this doily punch. Love it. I, I mean, this, I use it all the time. And I just do in the middle. I don't make all of those doilies on, um, design on the top. I thought it looked so pretty just cutting out, just having a hint of the doily uh, design on there was beautiful. Oh yeah, let's clean it up again. And then I'm going to see, okay, I'm going to run those uh, vintage dies of Eldera's Creative Dies through my Xyron. Can't be without a Xyron. I can't. And uh, yeah, just push them through, wheel it through, easy peasy, and you have it all, you know, with, with glue on the back. It's nice. And there you do. There you go. There you do. <laughs> yeah, there you do. So let's get, uh, I'm just measuring it off and starting again because I saw that there was a little fold I didn't want to use. I used my ATG gun to go around the edges. And I put quite a few micro mini glue dots uh, underneath this because instead of doing two lines of the uh, ATG gun on the, I didn't want any edges there. I'm just going to try and explain what I'm talking about here. Uh, when I put the, oh, I, I used double sided tape. What am I talking about? The reason why I didn't use ATG gun is because I didn't want to bend the box. There we go. I'm not taking out of the tutorial, tutorial. That's what happens, you know. I, oh, get up there, Carol. Get up on your seat. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. I decided to do cream and then, yeah, fix it up, Carol. Take it off there. You're putting it in the middle. No. Never put anything down right away. We all know that, right? In case you want to, because I have pink cut out with this. I have cream and I have white, two of each color. I decided to go with this because all of a sudden I thought, ribbon, you're not going to see the center anyway, Carol, so just put it there and go over it. I put a bit of baby powder on the ends of my fingers when I go over to get those little boogers off from the um, Xyron. And if this way, the oil on your hands doesn't come off on the box because I always brush a little bit off to the side of baby powder, pounce my fingers down in it, and then swish it, you know, back and forth. Just like you were going to do the 
you know, in school. Remember back when you used to do the bars in your gym class in high school and you'd put that uh, so uh, powder block on your hands. Look at me, I'm trying to do it. You rub it together and then you go on top of those bars and swing all over the place. Well, I wasn't doing that while I was preparing this for you. <laughs> I was going down memory lane. Here we go. Yeah, enough of that. You're not young anymore, Carol. You're 64 years old. Come on. But memories are nice, aren't they? Yeah. So here we go. So once I have that, I have the glue dots behind the beauteous, beautiful satin ribbon. And that's from, you can tell looking at that roll of ribbon, it's from a thrift store because it's an oldie but goodie. And um, yeah, I'm going to put this down. And that's one of the dies that I had from Spellbinders. If you go over to my tutorial on the wedding card itself, I have all the names or on my blog, stampinribbons.blogspot.com. And um, yeah, here we go. So the ribbons, I have two cameo pieces in my stash of jewelry because I do make jewelry as well. And um, I did a four back and forth. So four loops, just, you know, no, mach no machines, nothing to help me. I just thought, oh, get that goop up. Yes, I didn't hold it fast enough. And my, yeah, my glue was drying there. So I just gathered it up. I tied a knot in my bow because that wasn't going to work. So I just hung on to it, tied a knot, and came back, added some more glue, put it in the center because nobody's going to see that. I'm going to have cameos on either side. So whatever I can hide, you just hide. That's what that's what crafters do, right? Um, you don't want to be playing around with hot glue because if you try to lift it up, you're going to take whatever's underneath it with you generally. So I'm just uh, careful when I do this. And look at that. Ooh, I won't even show you how I did that. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, with the hanging tails on there, and then you cut them off. There you go. Yes, I was getting more happy as the time went on. There's my Cameo to match. You can use E6000 glue on this, but it's not necessary. It will hold with the hot glue, especially if you're hot glue, like keep your hot glue hot. Uh, there's nothing worse than it not being hot enough and then it falls off. Yes, isn't that a nightmare for all of us if something falls off our work? And I'm just pulling out the camera and there we have it my friends oh just tap 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 so pretty just pretty yeah clear the space there flowers ribbon they're all nice so there we have it my friends the little cards that the ladies got to put their little note to the bride and groom and the little money envelope and uh we're all finished I don't know why I felt the need to put that in the tutorial. Oh, oh, I'm so glad I got an email. <laughs> Can you imagine me not having an email? Oh, I wanted to show you the Heidi Swap little gold clips I had. That's a good idea too, to have the clips do five on one clip and five on the other and then put them underneath the box. That's probably why I put that in the tutorial. And the box is ready. It's elegant. It's uh, just has that anything with the cameo you have to admit it is very romantic with cameos and gold and filigree and lace oh, I'm so pleased with this project I really am I you want to make sure you get all those hot strings off there too there's the congratulations I'm going there's the bottom I'm going to slide the card down and here it fit perfectly I mean it was a perfect fit I yeah, the sides, remember on the tutorial, if you're interested in creating a wedding card, I would encourage you to go over onto my tutorial. I'll leave it at the end of this tutorial so you can just tap on the link and view how I made this bridal um, card. Yes, it's a wedding card. You can't forget the groom, right? It's not just a bridal card, it's a bride and groom card. <laughs> Thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate every one of you. 
your comments do mean the world to me. We don't put that in there. I just did it there. I told Tanya, don't put it in with the shadow box. You don't want to squish that down. So she did it. She said she put it at the bottom of the card. So anyway, have yourself a blessed week. I'm off to finish a project for my design team for LDRS Creative. If you'd like to join me for that later, when I get it complete, I'm going to upload this now and I look forward to hearing from you. I love to hear from my subscribers and those that view my tutorials if you're not a subscriber. And you have yourself, like I always tell you, a wonderfully healthy, blessed week. Take care everybody. Enjoy the pictures. Mm -hmm.